Good afternoon, everybody. This is Mike Brennan here at the National Hurricane Center. It's just after 5 p.m. Eastern time on Friday, August 2nd. Coming on with the latest about potential tropical cyclone number four, our disturbance that we're monitoring here. Uh, it's getting gradually getting better organized today. You can see the shower and thunderstorm activity increasing generally around the system. The center, as such as it is right now, is still located inland across portions of Cuba. Uh, it doesn't have a well-defined center yet, so it's not yet a tropical depression. Maximum sustained winds, we think, are around about 30 miles per hour or so, but the system's now moving quickly off to the west-northwest at about 16 miles per hour, and once the system moves away from Cuba and into the Florida Straits and into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, we're expecting it to find a more favorable environment, and we are expecting the system to go on and become a tropical depression by early Saturday and then strengthen to a tropical storm as it moves up the uh, eastern Gulf of Mexico and near the Florida Peninsula over the weekend. Uh, if we take a look at the biggest hazard with this system is still going to be the heavy rainfall. We're expecting widespread rainfall totals of four to eight inches across the Florida Peninsula and up into the coastal portions of the southeastern United States from Georgia into South Carolina and especially southeastern North Carolina as we go through the weekend and into Wednesday. We could see isolated rainfall totals as high as 12 inches in some locations in these areas. The exact location of the highest, heaviest rainfall when it'll occur will be determined by the exact track this system takes, but there's certainly a broad risk of uh, flash and urban flooding across much of Florida, extending up into the coastal southeastern United States over the next several days. And this is that greatest risk over the next five days. Anywhere you see in yellow here has that level two out of four risk of flash flooding. So uh, includes places like Miami, uh, portions of the Florida Keys, the Tampa Bay area, Orlando, Jacksonville, Savannah, Charleston, Wilmington. So everybody in those areas, especially if you live in a flood prone location, going to want to pay attention to any flood watches or warnings that are issued by your local National Weather Service office. Uh, another change this uh, forecast uh, that's come out this afternoon is we've now issued a storm surge watch for portions of the Florida West Coast from Bonita Beach up to the mouth of the Suwannee River that includes Charlotte Harbor and Tampa Bay. We have the potential to, in this area to see storm surge inundation of two to four feet above ground level somewhere within this area, uh, likely as we go through the day on Sunday into Sunday night as the storm um, is forecast to move near and then make landfall along portions of the Florida coast. We could also see some coastal flooding of one to three feet of inundation above ground level from Card Sound Bridge around the southern tip of the Florida Peninsula up to Bonita Beach. Now, if we look at the forecast of the track of the system and the wind watches and warnings, again, as I mentioned, we're expecting the system to become a tropical depression during the day on Saturday and then a tropical storm on Sunday could become a strong tropical storm before it makes landfall somewhere along the west coast of Florida. Uh, again, with this track parallel to the coast, a small shift to the right could mean a landfall closer to, the, say, the Fort Myers area. A shift to the left could mean a landfall closer to the Big Bend. and could also vary the landfall timing anywhere from, say, Saturday night all the way into Sunday night or early Monday. Uh, beyond that time, we are expecting the system to move uh, parallel to and near the southeast coast of the United States as we go from Monday into Wednesday with some reintensification expected. It could be, again, a strong tropical storm at this point uh, affecting Georgia and the coast of the South Carolina and North Carolina. So certainly the potential for some impacts here uh, into next week. Right now we have a tropical storm warning that's in effect from East Cape Sable up to Boca Grande, including the Fort Myers area. We have Tropical Storm Watch in effect for the Florida Keys and north of Boca Grande up to the mouth of the Suwannee River, including the Tampa Bay area. So everybody in this Tropical Storm Warning area means uh, tropical storm conditions expected within the next 38 hours. Tropical storm conditions are possible within 48 hours within the watch areas. We're likely to see additional watches issued uh, farther north along the west coast of Florida and then eventually transitioning over to the east coast of the Florida, uh, northeast coast of Florida and up into Georgia and the Carolinas as we go through the next day or so. Uh, again, time of arrival of when those tropical storm force winds are expected to begin during the day Saturday in the Florida Keys and southwest Florida in that warning area by Saturday evening, and then along the uh, west coast of Florida in the watch area as we go through the day Sunday, and then reaching uh, northeast Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina as we go from Sunday night into Monday and Tuesday. So uh, just a few reminders in terms of preparedness as we're dealing with this system that again is expected to become tropical depression and then a tropical storm bringing multiple hazards is know your risk from water and wind. Are you in a storm surge evacuation zone? If so, uh, be sure to listen to any advice you're given, especially if you live in that storm surge watch area along the Florida West Coast. Know what your risk is from freshwater flooding. Do you live in a flood prone area there? Uh, find out if you live in an evacuation zone and identify your home structural risks. And a reminder, you still have 
some time to put your disaster supply kit together uh, for the, this event and for the remainder of the hurricane season. Make sure you have multiple days of food, water, prescription medicines, keep your gas tank full, cash on hand, and uh, keep batteries. Uh, make sure your phone's charged and make sure you have a battery powered radio and a NOAA weather radio to get uh, a safety and weather alert information if the power goes out in your area. So let's wrap up with a few, again, reiterate the key points here with potential tropical cyclone four. Biggest threat in the short term is heavy rainfall and the possibility of flash and urban flooding across Florida and into the coastal areas of the southeast uh, from this weekend through Wednesday of next week. Tropical storm conditions expected in the warning area along the southwest coast of Florida, possible in the Florida Keys and along the uh, uh, west coast of Florida up north through the Tampa Bay area to the Suwannee River possibility of life-threatening inundation from storm surge uh, in that region from Bonita Beach to the mouth of the Suwannee River, including Tampa Bay, Charlotte Harbor, where we have a storm surge watch in effect. And then additional impacts from storm surge, heavy rainfall, flooding, and wind are certainly possible elsewhere in Florida and along the southeast coast of the United States from Georgia up through North Carolina as we go through the middle portions of next week. So again, a reminder, keep checking in for the latest uh, here at the National Hurricane Center at hurricanes.gov. You can get more information from your local National Weather Service office at weather.gov will be with you throughout the weekend and into early next week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center.